Antonio Global Listeners. Edmund Baker Jr. out of Houston, Texas. My soul is anchored in the Lord. But right now, right now, our special guest right here on KROVFM.com, our commissioner of San Antonio, Texas, Precinct 4, Commissioner Tommy Calvin. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Elder. It is so great to be back on your show. I just want to thank you for doing what you've done for so many years since the beginning. You've been a stalwart with KROV, and we just are so honored to have your great service. And of course, uh, to all your listeners for staying around as as fans, thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Commissioner, we're going to jump right into this because many people are talking and some are talking and don't know what they're talking about. But I don't know for sure, but when you stepped in to be the commissioner, you were the youngest commissioner that ever stepped into that place? Yeah, I was the first African American and, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was done on a prayer. I mean, it, it was, uh, it almost didn't happen. I, I was getting ready to go to New York and uh, participate in a, a television show on MSNBC on uh, human trafficking, rescuing victims of human trafficking. And uh, we had a lawsuit filed against the show. We were going to be the uh, Thanksgiving weekend special. And everybody was saying, you got to run, you got to run. And I was like, I can't run. I'm going to New York. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to help victims of trafficking. It's always been a blessing of, of mine. And, and then a lawsuit was filed and they held up the show and People kept saying, you got to run, you got to run. And so then I asked my buddy, Aaron Cohen, I said, you know, what do you think if I were to run? He said, you got you, you got to do it. I got his blessing. And then I prayed at the radio station right there at KROV at 8 o'clock in the morning. I said, God, if you want me to run for this position, you're going to have to move the filming of the television show past the March Democratic primary. And at 1 o'clock that same day, that same day, I got a call from our assistant, Dawn, in New York. She said, well, congratulations, Tommy. The producers and the vice presidents of NBC have decided to resume the airing of the show. I said, when? She goes, sometime past March. We're not exactly sure. And I got goosebumps, and I looked up, and I said, Lord, I didn't want you to tell me that. And that's when I decided to run. (laughs) Amen. True story. True story. Now. God's been with me the whole way. And, you know, and that's one of the things I can I can say, uh, knowing you personally, is that you do put God first. You know, we have to. We have to. He has fought so many battles for me. Uh, when I write the real autobiography of re- what really went on, people are going to think it's an epic battle, another biblical chapter. I'll be happy to add it because God deserves the glory. Mm. Now, Precinct 4, Precinct 4. I've, I've been to some um, events where you spoke out and changes have been made because of the lack. People have complained. But you've covered a lot of territory in the past three years that people thought was impossible. Can you share some of those things that you, uh, the areas that you cross that you made a difference in? In precinct four. I'd be honored to. Yeah, thanks. You know, the, the, when I when I ran for office, it's actually been five years, almost six now. When I ran for office, I uh, I didn't go there and say I'm Tommy Calvert, best thing since sliced bread. Vote for me. I I ask people, what are your top three issues and concerns about what's going on in your neighborhood, with your family, with your country and community? And I listened. And because of the the brilliance of the people of precinct four, they gave me incredible solutions. And so what we did is we documented from the 15,000 doorsteps that I walked as a candidate, we documented in every neighborhood what the issues were, and we went after it. And so I'm proud to say that 85% of the things I, uh, I campaigned and told you I was going to do, I did. And that's why I ran unopposed. Um, but, you know, I like to say that you never uh, unopposed when you're trying to do the Lord's work. The evil forces will always try to come after you. But I'm very proud. Uh, that I helped save Randolph Air Force Base, which is the sixth largest employer. It's part of what makes this military city USA. Uh, Randolph Air Force Base has a $1.3 billion annual payroll up in the uh, county here, and it was very important as the chairman of the Randolph Joint Land Use Study that I helped put together uh, parcels of land 
uh, so that the runway wouldn't have uh, obstructions as new development comes in the area. Uh, I've also put in the first senior property tax freeze at the university health system. That wasn't my idea. That was from a neighborhood resident. They, they said, you know, uh, I noticed my university health system taxes are, are high and uh, they don't have a senior property tax freeze. Well, we got a $10,000 exemption and we're still working for more. Of course, justice issues are very much in the headlines right now. And before I came on the court, there wasn't body cameras. You look at the death just this week, those body cameras uh, are going to be crucial in uh, determining justice uh, in, in, in those cases. And I was the one who pushed through body cameras uh, for the very first time in Bear County history. Uh, we have, uh, of course, also at the same time treated our sheriff's deputies better. I got them the largest raise of any law enforcement agency in the state of Texas. Uh, because they had been uh, in horrible working conditions. So uh, I also was on the southeast side, got $1.5 million for a clinical skill center for the new medical school down there. Now, all that means is that you, me, and Mrs. Jones out there, we can all go to the University of the Incarnate Word Medical School and receive uh, care from the doctors and the interns that are there. Uh, I have been uh, a strong proponent of the second chance job fair for the formerly incarcerated. We do that at the AT&T Center and Coliseum Grounds. Uh, one of the things that I think I'm most proud of is when I go to the grocery store and see people, they say, I still have a job at your job fair that we did. Well, we do it every year. Um, we've created the first new reentry center in the United States for folks returning from prison. Uh, I helped create 1,200 and 75 jobs uh, through the uh, downtown development. We went out to Vietnam and China, raised foreign money with the Houston ED5 uh, for the arts residents in Thompson Hotel, the nicest residents and nicest hotel downtown. 1,275 jobs. That's twice as many jobs as Donald Trump got when he tried to save Carrier. Uh, and, of course, uh, on the southeast side, I've also helped to give new life to the Hot Wells ruins. We've got a six million dollar new park for families to recreate i helped to get the old southeast baptist hospital this is one of my campaign promises uh i, I it was deteriorating you know southeast baptist was deteriorating on south cross and i got methodists to create the bishop ernest p dixon center we all remember bishop dixon uh i remember him uh as a young man speaking at his church uh he's gone home to glory but they put a new 10 million dollar refurbishment of that uh, I was able to get the tight sports complex repaired and new uh, entities to run it. Uh, we have uh, started Bear County Cyber and IT Initiative so that our young people can get $100,000 jobs. Uh, I'm going to stop there. I could go on. <laughs> I'm not going to try to take up your whole. I've been busy, brother. I've been busy. We're, we're, right now we're in the middle of a pandemic. I'm fighting for COVID one-day testing the things the government is supposed to do. We're not doing well. We're not doing testing well. We're not doing contact tracing. I've been the lone voice in elected officialdom that has been holding these fools accountable for spreading this virus. And I'm going to need your listeners and your supporters to come down to Commissioner's Court because I'm hearing that they don't want to do a reimbursement plan. I'm fighting for a reimbursement plan so that you can go to any urgent care clinic, whether it's Texas Med Clinic, Bath Med, uh, any urgent care clinic, and if you don't have insurance, the county will pay for it because they're turning around tests within 15 minutes uh, to no more than three days. And that's what we need. We need people to know the results. Our working class community can't afford to take off work and wait 10 days for uh, the state and the county to get their test results back. It's unacceptable to me. And so I'm fighting for people every single day, keeping people in housing, keeping people from losing their apartments. Uh, it's a big battle. It's a lot to put on your shoulders, but uh, God is fighting the battles for me. Uh, he, we, you turn it over to him, and he will, uh, he will make the crooked path straight. Okay. Tell us, share with us, is there a number for them to call to find out more information? You can always call your office of Precinct 4. We work for you. You're the boss, 210-335-2614. That's 335-2614. Okay. Commissioner, I have to ask, I have to ask, because every time I look around, you're here, you're there, you're way out there, you're across state, you're out of state, and then you come back in and you're meeting the needs of our community in Precinct 4. How do you do it? 
think I have my father's hyperactivity, <laughs> and I just tell it, ch- channel it. I'm coming into KROV to fix the computers in a minute, too, so I'll get there momentarily. But um, I don't know. I, I just, uh, with the with the energy of the angels and the ancestors, we try to uh, channel the determination to get it done because uh, so many people in our precinct have been neglected for so long. And um, I'm very aware that i got to make every day matter. Uh, I'm grateful to my mother uh, for giving me an incredible education where at St. Mary's Hall we had four hours of homework every day, so it's nothing for us to work till 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. That's what we've been doing since we were a child, and so we put that energy and discipline to work uh, to chip away uh, at the bureaucracy and get things done. You know, I have, I have to admit, let's go back a little bit about your childhood days. You, you were not, you were a natural person, but I've never heard of a person studying encyclopedias. <laughs> yeah, I used to read dictionaries, encyclopedias, and things like that. I, I, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a certified dork, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I'm not going to keep you long, but. What can we expect? I know we're in the midst of the pandemic. You're here and you're there. But when all of this is over with, or even before it's over with, within the next three or four months before the new year, what can we look for? Well, I think what we must do as a community is get very focused on this election. It's vote or die. Mm -hmm. It's literally literally what's on the ballot. Your life is on the ballot because we have a president who's a pharaoh who just doesn't care. And so um, we have got to rise up as people of light, people of faith, and we have to pray, but we have to pray with works. Uh, we, have to, uh, we have to make sure that we understand what we think is happening with the racism and the onslaught against the black and brown minority community, them trying to work us out. You're, it's not a figment of your imagination. There is a race war at play, and a pandemic is being utilized as a tool, just as it once was when they gave... Uh, Native American smallpox or or polio blankets or black syphilis. Uh, This is a modern-day weapon of war uh, in a census year. Uh, It's being done because of the count. It's being done because of the last throws of white supremacy. It's being done because uh, they want to maintain political power, which yields economic power, billions and trillions of dollars over the next decade at stake. And so they're going to fight like hell. Uh, to make our numbers seem less, to make uh, sure we don't live. Uh, but we have to stand up and demand at City Hall, at Commissioner's Court, in the State House, in Congress, in every hall of government, we have to demand that they are responsive to our needs. You know, we have SAISD going for a bond for $1.3 billion. But why didn't they think about carving out maybe $30 million so every child and every teacher could be tested, or every family, every person in that family could be tested. Uh, we have we have a, an election happening in November on transportation at a time where people are working from home. Uh, there isn't as much congestion. Some of those things can wait, but yet they take the protection of the aquifer away uh, as we go through climate change, and we're going to need our environment more. Uh, we don't have anything on the ballot in November at the city for testing or building hospitals for long-term COVID care, because just because they show recovered numbers doesn't mean those people still don't have problems walking, doesn't mean those folks don't have cardiac issues of their heart, doesn't mean that they don't have kidney and liver and brain function issues. We're not even talking about the fact that we don't have enough hospital space. But Mm -hmm. I mark my word, when the cold months and that second wave comes and our hospitals get full, because we've allowed the kids to go back to school and the virus is spread, you will remember, Tommy Calvert said, we needed to build more hospitals. We need to build long-term care. That should be on the ballot. So that's what people have to wake up, stay woke, and vote. And you got to vote for people who have your interest at heart because we are at war. I mean, the thing that happened at the postal office, I can't tell you I'm fighting so hard to clean up our election. I believe there's fraud, corruption, hacking in the Bear County Elections Department. I'm standing up to it as hard as I can, but I got to tell you, it ain't an easy place to be, but it's the right thing to do because Trump will win if he can cheat. He'll he'll shave off two to four points cheating, hacking the machines, stopping the mail, 
we got to stay awoke. We're under attack. When they remove those machines, that's the work of an attack of a dictator. I started my career taking down dictators in Sudan and Burma and across the world. I know one when I see one, and we're going to take this one, this Trump, we're going to take him down. Okay. San Antonio Global Listeners, with me right now is Commissioner Tommy Calvert, Precinct 4 in San Antonio, concern about the community, concern about your welfare, your life. And again, for more information, be on the move, on the go, contact Commissioner Tommy Calvert, Precinct 4's office, if you would like to know more information and what to do, how to do. Any last words, Commissioner? No, I think I just dropped the mic. I think we're good. <laughs> All right. We thank you. Thank you, Commissioner, for your time. And just have to ask, where is the love? It's within you. You're tuned in to KROVFM.com. I'm your host, Elder James Lockhart. Again, we thank you, Commissioner. And much more music is coming your way right now. Right here. ROV. There's no place for all this hate Stop it now, don't hesitate 